All right, uh, so I'd like to take a minute and introduce Brother Nubi. He is our relationship coach here at Beyond Shy. He's an American-born revert. He's currently based in Cairo, Egypt. Uh, mashallah, he's spent a long time serving the Muslim community in various capacities. Relationship coaching is definitely one of them. He also serves as an imam and has posts in numerous uh, academic educational fields. Um, his background is in the field of sociology and psychology. He's holding a bachelor's degree. Uh, Brother Nubi, mashallah, has been married for more than four decades. He's the grandfather of 10, mashallah. Uh, and, you know, he really does understand the integral value and importance of families in terms of, you know, Islam uh, and how the functioning unit of a family, the basis of it, the foundation and, and how we can create better lives through understanding that better. Um, he's definitely demonstrated a passion and commitment to strong and healthy marriages. And he's done, you know, premarital coaching and provided guidance to newlywed couples as well as long married couples, uh, helping them stay the course. So without further delay, inshallah, we'll begin today's webinar, the fishbowl. Jazakumullah khair again for joining us. And we hope this is a mutually benefit beneficial endeavor, inshallah. Thank you, uh, Sister Samia. Before uh, we begin, I would like to, of course, first start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alimi wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sabiya jameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alimi. And I'm so happy to be here this, uh, well, evening for me and morning for you, mashallah. Uh, alhamdulillah to Hopefully what we will share, inshallah, as uh, Sister Samuel said, will be of some benefit to all of us, inshallah. Uh, every time I make a presentation, I learn something in the process because, number one, I like to hear from you. And number two, I always in the process of continually, inshallah, trying to research and to widen my knowledge and horizons about whatever subject it is that I am I am speaking upon. Before we get directly into the subject or into the content uh, and the title of the fishbowl theory, we're going to come to that. I, I would be remiss if I didn't really make some mention of Gaza, and we'll tie that in really to our conversation this evening. We all are, you know, very much aware of what's going on uh, in Gaza and in Palestine in general, and what's happening with our brothers and sisters there and the genocide that is taking place. I don't know about you, but I, I and, but I, well, I, I think I do know you. I think I do know about you because I, I do believe that you are sensitive and warm hearted human beings. Alhamdulillah. And any sensitive and warm hearted human being can't help but feel, you know, for what is happening there. And you know, what has made me think about in, and, and it relates to what we're going to talk about tonight, inshallah. It made me think about priorities. Because, you know, we sometimes have misplaced priorities. And this happens sometimes. And we want things in our lives. And, and sometimes the things that we want are not necessarily the things that we need. And so if we contemplate and we focus on these things too much, again, they become excessive in our minds. Again, they become misplaced. And we are really not looking in, in the right direction. And, I, and I'm saying that because particularly as it relates to, to, to those of us and you who are looking to get married, and you, not us, not me, my wife is listening, <laughs> those who are looking, you know, that are looking to get married. Because it's important that we have our priorities straight. It's important that we are really, you know, sincere. We're going to talk about that, at, you know, at the end of, of, of this, this session here, that we have our sincerity is in the right place, that we're sincere about what we're doing. You know, because if our priorities are straight, then, you know, and, and particularly if we think about it in the context of Gaza and what our brothers and sisters are going through, families being displaced, families being destroyed, homes being destroyed, lives being destroyed, and, you know, and I thought about it and, and when I was thinking about tonight's session, I said, you know, sometimes when we're thinking about getting married, particularly when you're young, like you guys, mashallah, 
we have all these wonderful ideas and nothing is wrong with these things. But sometimes, sometimes we have to take a step back and say, how really important is that? So I hope that, you know, you will, when you, when you read the news and you watch what's going on and of course don't overdo it, please. But when you, when you focus up on that and think about it and make dua for our brothers and sisters, you know, think about it in the context also in terms of your own life. All right. So do that. Alhamdulillah. It also brought me to another point and to an ayah in the Quran that relates specifically to what we're talking about tonight for those that want to get married. In Surah to Rum, uh, this is the 30th Surah, I believe, uh, Ayah 21, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and among his signs is this, is that he created mates for you, that you may, you know, dwell, and that you may have in them a place of repose. What is repose? And it's translated as repose. What is this repose? Repose is oftentimes translated as, as a place or a state of being of happiness, of relaxation, of safety, and of security. And isn't that what we want? When you're wanting to get married, it should be what we want. Because this is one of the goals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that we should be looking for. He says he's placed, one, he's created for us mates. So there's a mate for us there somewhere. And that's number one. And in that mate, we, we hope to find, and we should be looking for these qualities. All right, these aspects, looking for someone that can give us that and someone that we can share that with one another and we can help in exchange because in a relationship, we're not just taking, we're also giving. You get that? We're not just takers, but we're also to be giving because sometimes when I've talked to young people about getting married, they've got getting married, the focus seems to be on what the other person is going to give them as opposed to, or as well as, what can they provide the other person? And when I say provide, in this case, I'm not speaking of the material things. We'll talk about that in other, in other webinars. But now we're talking in, in this particular ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are talking about some of these qualities here that are intangible. You can't, you can't touch them, you can't feel them, you can't grab them, you can't go spend them, but it's something that gives peace in your life. So if you look, when you're looking for someone to get married, you should think about this ayah. Is this the type of person that I can feel safe with? Is this the kind of person that I can feel secure with? Is this the kind of person that I can come home to or that will come home to me, however that situation may be, and that the home is a place of tranquility? What will that be like? Now, I'm not going to get too deep into this particular, some aspects of what I'm getting ready to say right now, because we're going to talk about it again in some future webinars. But here's one thing that does not been mentioned in this, that has not been mentioned in this ayah. There's a word that wasn't mentioned. That's the word love. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> that a love is, is a part of our deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, speaks about love. He loves beauty. He loves goodness. And love is okay. We, we don't have any issue with that. And we're going to talk about that. But my point is, is that this particular ayah is talking about also, again, these, these qualities that, you know, that normally we don't think about. That when I've spoken to people, the young people, brothers and sisters who are talking about getting married, and I ask them, what are you looking for? I don't hear anything about safety. I rarely hear anything about security. Security, not uh, security from the financial standpoint, I always hear that one, but security from the standpoint that I feel safe, that there's trust there. You understand what I mean? So, alhamdulillah. So, when I was reflecting upon, again, what is happening in Gaza and this particular ayah, this kind of came together for me. And it said that, you know, I think what we need to, our, our brothers and sisters, those of us that are looking to get married, need to focus a lot on this particular verse, this ayah. It's not that the other things don't matter. They do. They have their place. But again, it's about priorities, right? We said it's about priorities. So as you continue to you know, follow the events of what's going on and making dua and doing whatever materially you can to help our brothers and sisters you know, in Gaza, and, and our brothers and sisters in Islam, 
wherever they may be in the world that are suffering from oppression and under tyrannical rule, then also think about this as it relates to you as you go into marriage, as you're considering marriage, or if you're already married and what do you want to build upon? All right? All right. So alhamdulillah. So keep that in mind, inshallah. So this is very important. All right. So what is relationship intelligence? What is it? R I. Relationship intelligence, we should look at, at it as a body of knowledge, a body of knowledge that we will need in order to have a successful marriage or in order to even choose the right mate, inshallah, the best mate for ourselves, inshallah. You see, because choosing the right mate, having a successful marriage just doesn't happen by osmosis. It just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen by accident. And we can't, you know, it can't be, you know, you know, do it as we go along. It can't be OJT, on the job training. It can't be that. And unfortunately, some people approach it that way. But that oftentimes brings about a lot of difficulties and a lot of unnecessary heartache. And what we want to do and what I want to do and what we want to do here at Beyond Chai is to help you, so those of you that want to take this leap. Alhamdulillah, it's a wonderful leap that we want to help you to be able to navigate this process in such a way whereby that you minimize the mistakes and would help you to also get out of your own way because a lot of times we get in our own way when we're trying to do something important, okay? So it's a body of knowledge. All right, so what is this body of knowledge? So there are three things here. There are three types of relationships that must be considered. Now, we're going to get to the fishbowl theory in a second, all right, in just one second. But there are three types of relationships. And, of course, we're Muslims, so we have to always refer to that which is most dear to us. The first relationship that we must have, that we must strengthen, that we all should be always trying to improve upon, is our relationship with Allah. We must do that. And then the relationship that we have with the Sunnah, with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that is his Sunnah and following his way and understanding. And then the relationship with the creation. Now, we're going to focus on, of course, in our webinars about the relationship with the creation, with Allah's creation. You know, because obviously, inshallah, you will, all, you will continue to work on your relationship with Allah. You will all continue to work upon your relationship with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning following his sunnah and understanding and learning about it, but also that relationship uh, with the creation. And the creation is big. And that includes, of course, the people that we know, our parents, number one, for sure, our colleagues, our siblings, our brothers and sisters, and of course, that really, really important relationship is the relationship that we will have with our spouse, inshallah. That is a very, very important relationship. But that requires knowledge. In order for it to be successful, it requires knowledge. Just as you go and pursue a career, or as you have pursued your career, you had to gain knowledge in order to be successful at it. Correct? You had to, or else you couldn't complete it. But there's nothing even more important, and we're going to talk about this in a moment, than that, but this particular relationship, this bond between the husband and the wife. So this knowledge is very, very important. Now, how do we get this knowledge? We get this knowledge by listening to those and studying those who have learned, who have gone through the experience, who can guide us through this particular process. Because if you haven't been there, see, there is no book anywhere. You know, there are some books, but generally there, there's not a, you know, just a complete manual for the Muslims in general and specifically is, you know, how, how do I choose that mate? And there are some, but what I'm trying to say is, is that you, you have to, you have to seek out that knowledge of how to make that work. It can't be based upon how your friend did it. You know, it can't be based upon, you know, some movie or TV series or something like that on an unfortunate we are, we are impacted by this kind of a thing. It has to be based upon the kinds of knowledge that we just we, we just referenced. Again, the knowledge of Allah, Allah, the message of Allah, and of course, of how we should be and what our relationship should be with the rest of the creation. 
So this is really, really very, very important. So in order to learn, we've got to put ourselves in that position to learn and to grow. We have to have a growth mindset. And I hope that for those of you that are listening and that are watching this webinar, that if you are interested and you're pursuing marriage, that one of the most important things that you will be able, that you can do to help to ensure that this process will be solid is that you have to learn and you have to be willing to grow. And in order to be able to grow, you have to put yourself in that kind of environment that will allow you to grow. Now, what is, now let's get to the talk about the fishbowl theory. I don't know if you've ever heard about the fishbowl theory, but I thought it was rather interesting when I heard it from a psychological standpoint. I don't know how many of you have pet fish, but anyway, it is said that fish, that little fish, that well, any type of fish, when it's put in a bowl, they did only grow as large as the bowl. And you keep that fish in that bowl, then that's as large as it's going to grow. And the bigger the bowl, the larger it will grow. And, you know, plants are like that, too, in a way. Some plants are like that. You know, I used to have a plant. I forget what kind it was. But when I, you know, my daughter or my wife or someone told me, said, no, you got to put it in a bigger pot. And then it will grow. And as I, you know, those roots spread out more and more. They got the, the nutrients that they needed. You'll get the knowledge that you need. So don't be afraid to put yourself in a bigger bowl, in a bigger in a larger learning environment. And don't worry about what others say. Don't worry about when others say, the naysayers about what you're doing because this is your life. This is your future. It's not their life, it's not their future. So if they know or you tell them that you are you know, attending such and you know, beyond chai webinars in order to learn how to choose a spouse, how to have a better marriage, et cetera. Don't worry about that. This is for your benefit. This is, a, inshallah, is helping you to grow. So have a growth mindset. Don't be afraid to grow. You know, one of the, one of the problems from the psychological standpoint that many people have is that we have a comfort zone. And unfortunately, many of us are afraid to get out of our comfort zone but you can't grow that way. You won't really learn that way. You won't really develop to your fullest potential in that way. So don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone. All right, I want you to do a little exercise with me, okay? All right, just to talk about comfort zone here for a moment. So I don't know if you can see my hands. So I want you to clasp your hands just like this, all right? As you normally do. Is everybody doing that, inshallah? Okay, so. You clasp your hands just like this, one over the other. I want you to notice which thumb is over the other thumb. Is it the right over the left or the left over the right? All right? So, all right. So, so you, you know which one is that way. Now, what I want you to do, okay, I want you to reverse. So, if your right thumb is over your left thumb, I want you to reverse the clasp and put your left thumb over your right. I dare say it feels a bit uncomfortable, doesn't it? It feels a bit uncomfortable. And what you want to do is to go back because that feels more comfortable. Are you getting my point? And my point is, is that learning new things, putting yourself in a, in a better, bigger environment on a bigger bowl, bigger fish bowl, is sometimes uncomfortable. And the tendency is, is to go back to what we are comfortable doing. Although the thing that we're comfortable doing is not getting us, may not necessarily be getting us where we want to go or as far as we could possibly go and potentially go. You're getting my point. It's just a simple demonstration. But this is, this is just normal. This is life. So I the, the point I'm trying to make here and the one, and I hope you're grasping is that don't be afraid to learn new things. And what I hope to do in these webinars is to challenge the way that you're looking at things. And believe me, when we get into more of these webinars, I'm gonna inshallah push you to think about things in different directions that perhaps you haven't thought about before, all right? And it may go completely against, against 
what you have typically thought about or what has been culturally, and when I say culturally, I mean in your normal environment, you know, in terms of relationships of, about that, okay? So I'm gonna tell you one quick story here, and then we'll move on to the to the next slide and to the next section section here before we, we wrap it up. You know, I'm gonna go back to that, um, to that ayah. Remember when I said, I said in that ayah, there was no mention of the word love, all right? And this is just something for you to chew on. And we'll talk about it in depth later on. Not tonight, but in future sessions, okay? I don't know if this story is true to be, okay, so this is the disclaimer. And this is talking about love now. We're going to talk about love. We're going to talk about love. Because I know everybody likes to talk about love. So I don't want to disappoint anybody tonight. We're going to talk about love. By the way, before I talk about love, you know, uh, Sister Sammy, you know, she mentioned that I've been married over four decades. Actually, well, she's right. I mean, we've been married since 19, I've been married, same woman, <laughs> uh, since 1978. You do the math, that is what, 45 years, I believe? That's a long time. And I always jokingly say, you know, and in that time, we managed not to kill one another. <laughs> I mean, Allah's blessed us, really. Allah's blessed us. But that was because of certain things. It wasn't, doesn't mean that there weren't rough spots. There were clearly rough spots. There were definitely rough spots. But we had something to fall back on upon the knowledge, upon the knowledge of where to go back and say, okay, this is what we need to correct here. Here's how we need to correct that thing. All right, so let's talk about love. All right. So there's this story. And <laughs> it's really interesting given the, the current uh, uh, situation that's going on in the news because it's about a Jewish family. And it is said, it is said, again, that when a Jewish boy wants to marry a Jewish girl, he instead of going to the father, he goes to the mother. Okay, so this is to set it up. So it said that this young man, he wanted to marry this girl. So he goes to see the mother. So he asked the mother, tells the mother, you know, I want to marry your daughter. So the mother says, well, why? Why do you want to marry my daughter? And he said, because I love her. She said, okay, they talk a little bit more. So she asked him again. She said, now tell me again, why is it that you want to marry my daughter? He said, because I love her. They talk some more. And the third time she said, now son, for the last time, tell me, why is it that you, you know, you want to marry my daughter? He said, ma'am, I, I really, I really love her. He says, she says, son, I know that. But do you like her? You know, do you like her? We're going to talk about that. I want you to just, I want you to just kind of put a pin in that. I want you to think about that. Because in future webinars, we're going to, we're going to really get in depth about that. And again, this is not to dismiss love. Love is a wonderful thing. I'm I'm in love. You know what I mean? But there are some things that we need to talk about in that regard. There are some things that we need to get straight about what is really love. What does real love look like? You understand? So you have to understand. As Sister Samuel said, I've been married now for 45 years. Been there, done that. I have two t-shirts, not just one. I have two t-shirts. So alhamdulillah. So inshallah, really, my dear brothers and sisters, if there are any brothers here in, in, on the webinar, I really just want to help you. I don't want you to see you make mistakes because I've made some mistakes. I don't want you to see you make those mistakes. And you don't have to make some unnecessary mistakes. Not that everything will be perfect. No. But we can certainly minimize, you know, minimize the kinds of, you know, pitfalls that you're likely to find yourself in with knowledge. And that's what we're here for at Beyond Chai. We're here to provide you the guidance with the knowledge, you know, to help you along the way, give you that honest feedback. All right? I'm doing that. All right. So the third thing we're going to, the last thing we're going to talk about is about sincerity. All right? Or sincerity of intentions. And really, pretty much, this is what we've been talking about. Sincerity is 
is something that is very important to us in our deed. We have to be sincere about what we're doing. We have to be really sincere. Marriage, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, is probably likely the most important decision that you will make. Outside of accepting Allah and his messenger, marriage is going to be the most important one. Why? Because it will impact every aspect of your life. Every aspect of your life. More so than your job. You thought you thought maybe, maybe you thought that choosing the university you were going to go to, choosing the career path, choosing the, the organization you were going to work for, the corporation, that that was really important. And it was important. But it's not as important as the relationship that you're going to have with another human being that, inshallah, will be for the rest of your life. And I say, inshallah, for the rest of your life. Now, why am I saying this? Because unfortunately, these days, what I'm experiencing is that, unfortunately, many of our brothers and sisters are saying to themselves and to me directly, oh, well, about in terms of the approach to their marriage, if it doesn't work out, we can always get a divorce. Yes, that's the reality of that. We know that you can do that. Divorce is allowable in Islam, but it's not liked. This is not something that, you know, that we want, we go into wanting to see happen. And that shouldn't be our mindset. So we want to try to, again, this is about the sincerity here. So once we look at, you see, here's what, here's the deal. I think we have this kind of a mindset or that mindset exists about, oh, well, if it doesn't work out, I can always get a divorce. I, I think for two reasons. I, I, I don't want to say that we're not really sincere, that we're not good people. I don't want to think that. I, I rather think that we are not, as knowledgeable. We don't have the RI. We don't have the relationship, you know, intelligence, the proper relationship intelligence, so that we understand, uh-huh, this is what it should be about. Because again, we're going to be talking about in future webinars of why of what that relationship actually means. Far more than the things of this world. Okay? Because once you understand what that means, then, believe me, then some of these other things, um, on the scale of priority, they go way down. Because as, as a matter of fact, the reality will be, then when you're choosing your, your potential spouse, then you're looking at the end in mind. And this is what we're going to talk about later on. The end. What is the end? Well, we all know what the end. We all have an end, and we need to have someone that's going to help us to get there. You know, I heard something not long ago, and we'll conclude here. It just just recently, as a matter of fact, I was just listening to a video, actually. I don't remember, remember now who said it. And he said, basically, we just have two points in life. That the, 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 There's, how did he put it? There's life. We're born and we die and everything in between are the details. This is just the detail. We're born, we're created, you know, Allah subhanahu wa calls us to come out of the womb of our mothers, a part of his creation. That's that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we live our life according to the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we die. And then we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everything else in between are the details. And what we want to do is get those details right. We want to get those details right. And if we get them right, as it relates to marriage, it can be the most wonderful thing that you would have experienced. And inshallah ta'ala, inshallah, I will do all that I can. Our brothers and sisters and, 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 the, and the people at Beyond Child, all of us will do all of our best to help you to get it right. And I'm always trying to get it right. Believe me, I'm always trying. Believe I'm, I'm working on my marriage right now. After 45 years, I'm still working on it. Why? Because, you know, we're not the same as we were in 1978, you know? Not only just physically, but emotionally, psychologically. We're not the same people. But there was a commitment from that beginning, I think, I hope, was to, you know, that we realized that there were going to be some changes you know, we didn't have all the knowledge that we have now, uh, for sure. Don't get me wrong. 
Don't get me wrong. But I, I do believe that at that point in my life, in our life, and in the and in the society, you know, life is different now. And the society and the culture is different now. And I, I, you know, you know, I know you always hear old people saying, I'm one of those old people, you know, things aren't what they used to be. Well, I'm I'm one of those, and things are not always as they and they're not as they used to be. You know, so anyway, those are different time frame and, and you know, different kind of a mindset. And I'll just share this with you. I know I said this is gonna be the last thing. You know, I remember I'm a revert, you know, to Islam. And so in 1976, I think, um, my journey started in 74. But at any rate, so I remember when I became Muslim. And so I um, I was married at the time when I became Muslim. And my, my marriage actually was really pretty much on the rocks at that time anyway. And it was a, it was rough. And my becoming Muslim didn't didn't help it any, let me put it that way, you know, because it was a big change for my wife at that time. And, she, you know, you know, so it was a long, long story there. And so it, we just weren't able to make that, that turn. We just weren't able to make that turn, you know, together. Anyway, so some brothers in the community, you know, good hearted brothers, mashallah, they said, brother newbie, you got to get married. You got to get married. And I said, okay. I mean, I just, you know, got out of one, but anyway, you got to get married. I said, well, but to whom? He said, well, brother, there's sister this and sister. He said, but I don't know them. Doesn't matter. They're Muslim and you're Muslim. I said, oh, wait a minute. There's got to be a little bit more to it than that. There's got to be a little bit more to it. So there's the knowledge. You know, there's the knowledge. So we're not, we're not going to be naive at all. And we're going to consider all the things that need to be considered, you know, that are normal, you know, that are natural. Of course, we're not going to escape any of those. We're not going to dismiss any of those. But at the same time, we want to have a balanced way of looking at things. So anyway, JazakAllah khair. If any of you have any comments or any questions, if I said something that was totally out of whack, tell me, say, Brother Nubi, you need to go back to school. Anyway, this is Abiyu, mashallah. JazakAllah khair. Thank you so much. I hope this was uh, served as some benefit and it would encourage you to um, follow through with the uh, future sessions that we will have uh, uh, down the road, inshallah.